service. Before we begin this service, I just open a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this day, thank you for this opportunity that we can worship your name together, Lord, through the internet, through this online service. And yes, Lord, as we come together and remember what you have done for us on the cross to take away our sins and so that we can have eternal life and be reconciled with God once again. And Lord Jesus, as we gather together, as we sing your praises, I just pray, Lord, that you touch our hearts, Lord. Give us peace and give us hope and continue to touch us and let us experience you, Lord, through this service. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen.
thank you for, for what you have done on the cross. And on this day we remember what a sacrifice you have made for us. And we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory with our worship. come to the Lord's table this evening as we remember the Lord's death 2,000 years ago on this Good Friday. The Word of God says in Matthew 26 verse 26 to 28, He says that while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then He took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. We want to thank God for the bread which symbolizes the body of Christ, who was broken for us on the cross of Calvary. He was scourged, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And the cup represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. 
as we partake of this bread and uh, fruit of the wine, we want to remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. May we walk worthy of the calling of God and during this challenging time we are facing as we remember Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary when He said it is finished and our sin have been forgiven. Our sin have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for this evening as we come to the Lord's table. We we ask Lord you sanctify this bread, this cup. As we partake of it, Lord, we remember Jesus died on the cross for us 2,000 years ago on this Good Friday. May we partake of it and remember what Jesus done for us on the cross of Calvary and that we may continue to walk worthy of the calling that He called us. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Apostle Paul said this word, Say, For I received from the Lord when I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed to bread. When He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's my thing. In the same way, also we took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. Father, we ask of you as we took the Lord's Supper, we are remember the new covenant that Jesus instituted 2,000 years ago. We ask, Lord, for your divine health. We ask for your divine protection. Continue to be upon us. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people say, Amen. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me this Good Friday to remember the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ his suffering and death on the cross. In this time of MCO, Movement Control Order, a nationwide lockdown to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus, my thoughts dwell on how we no longer have the privilege and freedom of choice. We cannot choose to go where we like, do the things we like, even exercise in the park is forbidden. Also, we cannot go out to eat at our favourite restaurants. We all have to doodle ruma, stay at home. To many of us, this is suffering. So today, in this Good Friday message, I would like to journey with you in examining the power of choice and how it is life-changing. Tonight, as we visit the scene of Christ's crucifixion, we see three crosses on the mound called Gogota or Calvary. These crosses represent the power of choice. Three crosses, three different choices, three different outcomes. Let's read our Bible text. Reading from Matthew 27, 37, 44. They put a sign above Jesus' head with a charge against him. It said, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified beside Jesus, one on the right and the other on the left. People walked by and insulted Jesus and shook their heads, saying, You said you could destroy the temple and build it again in three days. So save yourself. Come down from that cross if you are really the Son of God. The leading priests, the teachers of the law, and the Jewish elders were also making fun of Jesus. They said, he saved others, but he can't save himself. He says he is the king of Israel. If he is the king, let him come down now from the cross. Then we will believe in him. He trusts in God, so let God save him now. If God really wants him, he himself said, I am the son of God. And in the same way, the robbers who were being crucified beside Jesus also insulted him. The first cross. 
The focus is on the one hanging on the middle cross, the tortured body of Jesus. Who is this man, Jesus? Is he truly the Son of God, in whom he claims to be? If he truly is, then why don't he save himself? Why subject himself to such humiliation? Jesus is the Son of God. His births fulfilled Old Testament prophecies. His work during his three years of ministry bear testimony for him that he is no ordinary man. He performed wonderful miracles. He healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead, and even calmed the storm. But yet, at this time of Passover, this time where Jesus was suffering and being crucified on the cross, is a time of Passover, where in the temple, lambs were being slaughtered as part of the ceremony in which the blood of the innocent animal had to be shed so that the sins of the people can be covered in order that they may draw near to God to worship and to be made acceptable to God for another year. Passover was a yearly affair because the blood of animals is only a temporary covering over sins, only for a year. So every year during Passover, Animals need to be sacrificed for the atonement of sin. Is it a coincidence that Jesus chose to lay down his life at the time of Passover? The power in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 The life of the blood, the body is in the blood, and I've given you rules for pouring the blood on the altar to remove your sins so you will belong to the Lord. It is the blood that removes the sins because it is alive. If the blood of animals can be a covering for sin, what more the precious blood of a sinless man like Jesus' blood? Hebrews 9 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So in this time of Passover, it is a, it is a Passover where it's time for Jesus Christ to sacrifice his life. Jesus is the unblemished sacrificial lamb whose blood was shed to take away the sins of the world once and for all. A one-time offering of blood, a one-time sacrifice. No more any need for a yearly Passover. John the Baptist recognized this when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, does Jesus have the power to save himself? Sure, he had. Jesus had the power to save himself from the cross, for Jesus is God himself. Jesus had the power to revenge himself against the enemies, but he chose not to. For indeed, in this time, the time when Jesus chose to lay down his life. Jesus said in John 10, 17, 18, I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from the Father. So yes, they tortured Jesus. They made Jesus carry his cross. But we would have had no power over Jesus if Jesus had not allowed himself to be tortured in this way. But why? Why such a sacrifice for sinners like you and me? Because of love. God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but everlasting life. So God chose us because he loves us, because of his choice of love for those who believe in Christ, we now have the privilege to become the children of God. So child of God, in his time of crisis, rest in his love. Believe that you are safe and protected by his blood. Have no fear but peace and joy. Love is a choice that we all can make. 
From this cross, we learn about the power of love. Yes, we cannot do many things at this time. Many things will change. Our lifestyle will change. The things that we plan to do will change. But yet, let's not forget. The best thing we can choose at this time is to choose to put on love at all times. second cross, the thief who insulted Jesus. Afraid to die, this man shouted to Jesus to rescue him. Save yourself! Save me too, if you are God! Did he suspect that Jesus was no ordinary man? I believe he might have a glimpse as the true nature of Jesus Christ. For while on the cross, Jesus uttered these words in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Surely these words spoken from Jesus' lips are proof that Jesus was no ordinary man. Only an extraordinary man would choose to forgive his enemies after suffering so much torture under his hands. Only God can forgive sins. But yet, Jesus addresses God as Father. So Jesus is God. And this thief had the chance to acknowledge Jesus as God and Saviour. Yet this man chose to fear. He chose to remain unrepentant for his sins. He failed to recognize that Jesus' mission was not just to deliver a man from a physical death, from physical discomfort, but to deliver man from eternal death. He failed to recognize that Jesus was not here to serve him. This man can choose at this time to be remorseful over his sins, and yet he chose not to change. Is that not how many of us relate to God? We pray for many things for our lives, and are not able to submit our lives totally to His plan for us. God becomes our servant and we His master. This is how sinful, unrepentant man thinks and behaves. If God fails in answering our prayers according to our desires, we lose faith in Him and turn our ways and shape our lives according to our own control. So if we fail to honour God and revere Him as sovereign God, and we too are guilty as this man. So, Jesus answered this man not a word. Jesus remained silent to the plea of the foolish one. This man made a choice, and his choice caused him to die in his sins, even though he was in the presence of one who saved him from his sins. Yes, Jesus would be able to save him, a God cannot be controlled by our own bidding. Nothing pleases God except our faith and trust in Him. From this man, we learn that we can make foolish choices when we are guided by our fears. We can make choices that will fail us and we will bear the consequences of those poor choices in our lives. The third cross. Both the thieves on the right and left of Jesus reviled and mocked him at the beginning, but midway one decided differently. He chose a different path, the path of repentance. He started the same way. He mocked Jesus the same as the rest. But yet, midway, he changed his plea 
Look in Luke 24, 42. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What happened? Interestingly, coming back to Jesus' prayer in Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The word that is written, then Jesus said, is in the continuous imperative tense. That means Jesus kept on uttering these words throughout his time on the cross. I believe each time he began to draw his breath and each time the insults were cast upon him, each time the soldiers came and, and, and draw and poke at him, Jesus said these words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Every insult, every breath, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Surely these words were the words that this thief listened to, and it opened up his eyes, and he grabs the truth that here is no ordinary man. Here is God in flesh. Here was God in flesh on a mission, a God whose plans is greater than a man can understand, a God who is setting up his kingdom. So by faith, he pleaded, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What choices did this man make? He chose to recognize that God's plan is not about him. He chose to recognize that God's mission is about his kingdom. So he humbled himself and asked only that the Lord remember him. He chose to believe over doubt. He chose faith instead of fear. He chose to trust God despite his sufferings. So to such a person, God responds. Jesus says, Today you would be with me in paradise. Yes, the reward of faith is immediate. Today, not tomorrow. What is his promise? It's not a destination or a place. But God, Jesus says, Today I will be with you. For those who would choose to believe in Jesus Christ, believe in the word of God. Jesus promises to us his presence. I will never leave you or forsake you. So in this time of crisis, we may not have control over many things, but everyone has control over their personal decisions. We might be moved with fear, we might be worried of our future, or what is to come. But you can decide life over that. The power for change lies in your hands. Choose to die to our fears. Choose to die to our sin. Choose to no longer live in darkness and ignorance of God's purpose in your life. Choose to read the word of God daily. Choose to seek the face of God. Choose to pray and ask God that you may be sensitive to the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let Him unfold His purposes for you. Let Him be with you. Would you choose to be like the second man? To believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and in Him is eternal life. If you want to choose Jesus Christ today, to surrender your life into His hands, you can follow me in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask you for forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come to my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you. Followed me in this prayer and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Welcome to the family of God. You are now a child of God, and the promises of God is for your life. Find a church, find a fellowship, and grow in your faith. For those of us who are children of God, let us remain steadfast in His love. Let us continue to pray and put our trust in Him for our daily needs. Live life one day at a time. 
Let us draw strength from this verse in Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. This is a promise from God. I believe in this time, God has promised us that He will lead and guide us if only we will choose to listen to His counsel. And God's loving eyes is upon us. So I pray that you be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, that you remain in faith. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Help us to always live our life according to your word and to always choose your ways, to choose to love. May we be sensitive to your Holy Spirit leading and counseling us in our lives. And may we be your light in this time of darkness to bring your message of hope to our friends and even strangers. In Jesus' name we pray.